Good evening, everyone. Your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you, yet they belong not to you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts, for they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls, for their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. You may strive to be like them, but seek not to make them like you, for life goes on and it doesn't move backwards, not tarries with yesterday. This is how Khalil Gibran describes children in his masterpiece work, The Prophet. The quoted excerpt holds relevance even, even after almost a century of its publication. For verily, children are learners in their rawest form, and in order to best understand the process of learning and knowledge acquisition, they must be placed at the center of observation. Such an understanding, however, has for long been disregarded with the advent of teaching where natural learning takes a back seat. In order to throw light on the need for learning, the world before learning the word, we have gathered here this evening in, in the eminent presence of Mr. K.B. Jinnan, who's from Trichur, Kerala. He did his engineering in 1983 and then post-graduated in product design from NID Ahmedabad in 1989. The process of knowledge creation calls for rediscovery that can be achieved by addressing the question of learning through biological propensity as against psychological conditioning. Without further ado, I would like to invite Mr. K.B. Jinnan to the podium and to present his views on the evening's discussion. Please, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, let me tell you one, the context of this. I read a story long ago, A.K. Ramarajan's collection. And he says, he talks about a story which is looking for an audience. So, this is something like that. Because this is a research of almost 30 years. Is that okay? Can you hear? Can you hear? Okay, uh, which is about what is learning. So the uh, you know the topic is called rediscovering process. What that means is that rediscovering the process of knowledge creation. It's very strange that after all this education, we are yet to find people who have been creating knowledge. Isn't it? So, and uh, for some reason, we are not even wanting to understand that. So it's not just, uh, you know, and it's so scaring, even, scary even now to address that whole notion that you can create knowledge. So, uh, actually you don't have to read, it's better you can look at me then hearing, use your hearing sense, don't read. Reading is very dangerous for cognitive process. S listen, just listen, don't worry. Uh, so brain is equipped to create knowledge, not to analyze information. That is not the way brain is designed. It's a biological process. And the rewiring of the brain as an analyzer, you know, of information, you know, of knowledge, is because we have placed knowledge in front, that is the cart before the horse, right? So the knowledge is in front, knowledge, ready-made knowledge is being distributed in the name of schooling and education everywhere. So we access it and analyze it. So brain as an analyzer of knowledge is a tragedy of a human being. So when the word was replaced by the, this happened quite, you know, maybe started happening after the printing press was established in Germany and it began to spread throughout Europe. So in that process what happened was that the world was replaced by the word and that became the knowledge, you know, that became the source of uh, knowledge, you know. So 
I am just you know talking about don't re- look at that I am talking about certain things that I am going to talk today you know a uh, few topics uh, as a whole process and learning as forming that's a you know because for us learning is almost like a one way traffic you learn but what you learn forms you now this is something that that uh, you know we have not addressed this at all that how is the source of knowing transforms you you know and then which also means that our mind is formed by what we do so i will also talk about formation of the mind how is the mind gets formed and uh, and the purpose of this is to see whether we can reimagine this whole education what we call as education can we bring back learning as a process you know just using our own senses that's all this this actually doesn't need any effort effort is required to teach people you know but learning is so natural it's like breathing there's no effort seeing has no effort actually but the way we have <laughs> reconfigured this whole system that now it is going to be very difficult and uh, so basically the purpose of this whole you know invitation is to reimagine what can we do you know uh, with all this kind of uh, you know once we understand what is that we can do hmm? and uh, so there are two three things that i want to you know so i i also want to talk about what are the possibilities so it's not that you know i have done so much of research no don't read don't read don't read please look at me don't read don't read yeah look at me please let's uh, you know try that you know i know you're all readers don't do that just look you know that may be easier so so this whole effort for me is not just empty reading and you know keeping research no the very clear cut uh, exploration about what can we do about it Uh, so i just want to tell you that you know i started learning learning began to happen to me when i stopped reading so in 1991 i stopped with reading completely and that is when actually i understood what is to learn you know it's an ab- absolutely a fortless thing it happens provided you are present you know? and the whole educated people i also used to be like that but their tragedy is that they are physically present mentally absent am i right <laughs> physically present mentally absent this is our situation you know and most of us think that this is so normal no it's not normal you just look at any child the child is fully present both physically and mentally they are present so there are few proposals that i have which is number one is that how do we within the given constraints of schools can we create learning environments i'm talking about learning environment in contrast to teaching environment what we have today is teaching environment there is no learning environment whatever story we talk about as child centric and you know it's all nonsense as long as the content is yours there is nothing called child centrism content we 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 dictate and then we say it is child centric that's because we don't know what is learning that's the reason it's like telling you know that anyway forget about it so another very important thing that we can do is understanding this how do we reimagine higher education how do we reimagine architectural education all this education because one thing that is clear extremely clear is that the whole educational process has been nothing but recolonization of our this thing you know, our, our culture it's just the colonization just continued that's all and i don't understand why after so many years nobody is even bothered about it being colonized being a slave has become our default you know and that's okay i just don't understand this why is that we are not pained by being a clone I just don't understand and uh, so so these are you know uh, things that i thought there are possibilities that exist clear cut this is not empty book reading you know uh, because all my work is based on experience there is no reading of books nothing i've just experienced i documented i observed children and it is all coming from experience nothing else so so 
just quickly i will tell you what is the process that i you know i hated schools my parents were teachers so naturally my home also was a school only so i had terrible time so engineering was a kind of a you know it was okay because it was in a hostel uh, but fourth year i was expelled and uh, i hardly attended classes so uh, fourth year i was expelled but that gave me time to reflect on what is happening around me i could not find one person in my college deeply interested in learning not even one person they were getting good marks but that is nothing to do with truly wanting to know that was absent so that one year was fantastic time for me to really uh, you know reflect on what is happening so i took it you know i went to a school started teaching in a uh, in a school realizing that it is from childhood that this whole tragedy begins so after that i you know my decided that i will only do things that i like to do because the tragedy of modernity is that most people do things that they don't like to do somehow adjust life you know and evening they have some entertainment this is what they you know so and then i had decided not to work and after two years i got into nid so coming to nid was fantastic because first time i experienced something called a learning space all the long i have been in a teaching space where teachers are there book is there you know teaching is happening you know and we are just consuming but a learning space is something where teachers don't teach there, there was hardly any teaching there was nothing to memorize so you learn because you are interested in learning you know so this was a very very interesting space for me so that three years at nid i used uh, you know to to really address what is really learning how does it happen what is culture what is beauty how does it happen so that was a fantastic time now when i look back it was like a womb for me for my rebirth you know? so so this uh, i hope you are looking at me only yeah <laughs> so what really uh, you know what made me address all this is because i felt that education is nothing but colonization number one homogenization homogenization of aesthetic sense look at all modern cities they all look alike because all architects learn the same thing you know from the same book i mean hardly any bauhaus ulm i mean <laughs> how can you produce you know authentic people once you go through this you know mind numbing kind of process it's not possible so that was my uh, interest another important thing is what i call as the ontological reversal what that means is that not complicated what that means is that knowledge comes before knowing i just not possible it's not possible how does it happen so then so these are the issues that i began to really uh, you know uh, bothered me so going to villages and staying there was fantastic because studying at nid gave me that possibility to work in rural areas so when i worked with uh, design i mean uh, artisan communities i realized that learning is a process of life that communities are learning you know H whole modern idea is that it is in schools that learning happens you know and there is somebody to give you that so so this uh, whole work with community gave me a very clear idea about what is knowledge why it is created how it happens because a potter's child is learned because they're not teaching at all none of the craft is learned by children by by the process of teaching so being with village people gave me a completely new notion about what is learning and it is there that i stopped reading completely and it it, it actually began to uh, you know rewire my process you know which is already uh, so what i am trying to talk about is that i have been actually in practice all my understanding comes from practice so i also uh, you know 2004 5 5 i began to no 2010 onwards i also began to uh, you know interact with design architecture students of foundation because i am only, only interested in foundation because that is the only time when you have a some chance to get back your child you know because it's actually a child like quality that we have completely lost through schooling and especially design i find that an id gives you that opportunity to become children again to touch to see to sense you know all your senses come back and uh, i always feel that it is only because of design and architecture there is at least we can take a feedback about what is schooling has been doing because if you go to iit the same story goes on no same reading same mugging up same 
so where is the feedback to find out whether whether you are creative the only opportunity you you get in to be creative is architecture and design uh so that is the area that i try and work and it's very simple thing learning to unlearn because the habits that has been put into you how do you address your habits that has been you know cognitive habits and then um, just learning to see it's very simple use your senses so i have a small foundation called existential knowledge foundation and people ask me what is the time frame i tell them 1000 years because the massive damage that is happening is unbelievable unbelievable the kind of nonsense that the western universities produce on children and learning is quite unbelievable i know you may i hope you don't find me as arrogant it's because i have studied children like anything i have at least 4000 document you know videos on children just documenting them just observing them not the kind of uh, you know documentation that they do the kind of uh, thing you know science psychologists and all that have to do with children no you make them sit there make them do all kinds of silly things and then then you decide there is something wrong with the child no <laughs> yeah that's what they do <laughs> i document the children what they were doing not under my instruction just whatever they were doing was interest to me so i began to document that and years of documentation observation gave me an insight into what are they doing you know so few things i will i will you know show you so so naturally my interest uh my actual interest is in learning not in children please understand this seriously because but to understand learning you have to understand children because these are the same thing if you want to understand creativity if you want to understand innovation anything that you say you have to understand children because they are they are that is they, you know this is the whole tragedy so motherhood extremely important because again see all these things are being destroyed by modernity motherhood it's a disease now no this is go to a doctor doctor will tell you what to do you know so being in process you know this is the way indigenous communities live my wife is non literate she has not gone to school and i used to feel but she doesn't know her age i know it mine so i always feel that she is living in timelessness isn't it just few days ago yesterday i think day before i met somebody she was telling that up i'm 30 now i stopped going to parties and i know some friends have been telling me after 50 there is something that happens to them you know really so people who do not know their age what would be happening to them you see i think there are whole lot of wrong things that we are celebrating <laughs> you know your age that is a great idea you know, i don't know why <laughs> there is a interesting uh, uh, you know inbuilt uh, you know it's like this terminator seeds no you heard of that terminator seeds they're designed to ter- self terminate that is the way modernity is creating us we are designed to self terminate i'm sure you know that <laughs> this whole suicidal attempt to to you know to destroy the earth this is a modern man's idea <laughs> no one else is doing it because we are against life simple i'm sorry eh? <laughs> making to <laughs> so what has happened is that from world we have begun to learn the word and this has completely created a uh, total rewiring of the system you know and not only that literacy change not only that literacy also brought in the notion that you have to teach you know so the very idea of teaching is something that came about after literacy was introduced and you know what literacy did you could take you know is a kandhe pe rakh ke ja sakta hai aap log knowledge ko kitab mein na this is the thing that the knowledge is externalized printed out and you can carry it anywhere this strange notion actually but to us now it seems absolutely normal so this is what i say literates learn the word illiterates learn the world so learning as a natural involuntary choiceless act 
learning has become a voluntary in language conscious authority dependent act don't read please look at me okay so the world is replaced by the word experience is replaced by reading reading and thinking senses are replaced with the mind so we just keep on creating all kinds of mental ideas and we think these are all this is knowledge so actually we are living in a mind created reality this is what i'm trying to talk about you know this is not true at all so two three examples i'll tell you the best example is that the notion of toy that the most interesting example i found that toy is a modern idea children doesn't need toys at all even play is an is a noun is an activity that modernity has constructed children playfulness of children is what they have so they play with everything so whatever is convenient we term it as play other one is not play so when a child is sitting on a sofa and you know bouncing no that is badmashi stop when a child is eating and playing with food that's not allowed you understand for a child the only way to live is to you know playfully explore everything you must have seen you know they will put all kinds of things on there to eat all the fingers and one by one they are eating so the whole aspect of a child's life is about play it's about playfulness please understand this is the quality of that being you know so look at this you know yeah, i don't think we will think this is a toy you see <laughs> i mean there hundred you understand na so toy is the worst thing it's the worst than schools you understand because the children want to learn the real world so you replace it with a toy silly toy you say now you play with it is it they are just not interested in playing please understand this their interest is to understand the real world there's no other intention in that process they do all lot of things they sit on a sofa they begin to bounce you know at that moment that's a playful activity in which that sofa has become a toy so toy has a very temporary kind of a existence that's all what are they are playing with at that time that and of course children doesn't have this notion of toy nor play so these categories are something that we put in into their head immediately i was in a village i was you know making all this documentation immediately he came back with crab look so they are just exploring the real world that's all so what i'm talking about is learning as forming is you know uh, can i ask you one or two questions what is the color of sky i know i am not trapping you blue okay. i'll ask you another question no no i would do sir question how me hey, mir <laughs> acha <laughs> let me ask you another question all of you know swimming how many know swimming who taught you no trapping i'm just asking a simple question <laughs> who, who taught you cycling who taught friend on my own okay chapati making how to make chapati who taught this is your playing with me anyway let me uh ask you, uh, just look at it like this if i say chapati making is taught by arta will you agree cycling is taught by cycle and swimming can only be taught by water will you agree with this no seriously i'm asking you that whatever quality you have to learn to cycle do you think your father have it or your coach have it no it's the cycle the balance whatever quality that you need to learn to cycle it's the cycle that teaches you it gives you that ability so you engage with it you change you transform am i right and then you engage with that so all so the whole notion about somebody teaching 
somebody or, or language is required uh, you know becomes redundant in this kind of thing that all learning is nothing but an engagement with what you are learning about it's a process of you know it's a uh, what you call that a, a process of response there's a response you understand you do it you know so there's constant feedback kind of a thing that is happening this is true of all all learning how does a good architect function so education is about knowledge uh, language description noun past absent because the notion is that education means you stored information inside am i right so normally when you ask question what is the color of leaf green no doubt or if you ask the question sky what is the color of sky yeah some color white blue all that you know but from memory i still trap you so when a child you ask this question to a child child this was asked actually in a class so the child asked back what time of the day are you talking about but because the child is present we educated are absent so we have an answer ready made to blurt out so we are constantly carrying knowledge which is in the past <clears throat> a true knowing is about being present this is not through meditation i'm not talking about meditation spirituality i'm talking about normal human being this is how it is <laughs> not spirituality being present is our nature that is the nature of all children that is the nature of you go to any non literate people go to any village that you will find them that they are present they are observing so so you know what prevents understanding is that one don't read what prevents understanding is that uh the kind of skills that we learn are belong to the language you know so normally some sometimes you are upset hearing these kind of things so there is a constant uh, you know fight against it you don't want to agree disagree you know that kind of thing and also then are, there, there is this another tool uh which is called reasoning that you know everybody celebrates reasoning and uh, i find that with reasoning you can't understand anything what you can do with reasoning is reasoning i have found that you know, there are three uses for reasoning number 1 See, somebody has to give you information. Then only you can reason, no? So, anyway, it is a second-hand tool. It is not a tool for creating knowledge. And what it actually, but it gives you a notion that it has given you knowledge. This is the biggest damage of, uh, you know. Have you come across uh, Stephen Hawking's statement? Recently, I was looking at that. He is telling that the the enemy of knowledge is not ignorance. It is wrong knowledge. It is not ignorance. the whole modernity i'm sorry again telling this a complete misunderstanding about children and learning because we have been looking at a paradigm of how to teach children am i right our whole concern is how to teach how to make them better <laughs> so we will find all kinds of new ways uh -huh. you know so this alternative schools came about what were they doing in front of sitting in the classroom they took, took them out to the garden what else did they did the content still belongs to you na igsc or something like that so other thing with uh, you know the the thing with reasoning is that it's a feel good uh, tool hmm? what it actually gives you is that uh, it's like uh, information has been given from childhood you memorize and store it am i right that's how you do it na but with info, with reasoning what you can do is that you can sort it out and still store it it's only a storing mechanism one secondly that it it, uh, it teaches you how to argue with your mental ideas not that you know anything but you can argue very well because in whole educational system you are asking children to think what do you think not whether they have seen it the whole promotion is thought is not observation they give you information then they ask you what do you think what can you do it's only a mental uh, game that you're playing and then of course uh, reasoning also then is a tool for conclusion it's not an open ended tool so and so because of this this is this 
So it's always it's a concluding tool. And uh, this is what I find very interesting. People, there are so many people now helping you with uh, out of the box thinking. Don't don't look at that, please. Nah. Out of the box thinking. You know. But I seldom see people talking about how did you get into the box. And the whole problem is that, na? There, see, the whole issue is that we are, you know, this is this whole uh, typical allopathic responses. You know, there is a symptom, you treat it. <laughs> so it is really not about trying to find out, you know, how did we get into this whole thing, you know. So also people talk about holistic way of knowing. Am I right? That's a new term that people keep using. Holistic way of knowing. As if our default is to be fragmented. I mean, <laughs> so one is not trying to find out how did we fragment first of all. So what happens is that, why I talked about learning as forming, is because even when you learn the learn word, word also reconfigures your system. This is the problem. Right from childhood, when you engage with the word, then your whole cognitive system gets rewired to understand the word. It's like cycling. Understand? So these two are two entirely different kind of cognitive systems. To learn the world, you have some kind of thing. To learn the world, you have something else altogether. But from childhood, it's like habit. You develop a habit. It's so difficult to change a habit, no? Exactly like that. For right from childhood, you create a habit of analysis, reading, thinking. You know, that's the whole process. Then the senses become dysfunctional. Observation. See. Everything that related with world gets uh, removed from that process, you know, which is about seeing, sensing, experience. But we create fake experiences. This is a problem. Like, you know, then we start looking at why is the child using, you know, this very notion of toy, the fake experience. So you create an idea. From an idea, you create a reality, which which is what the ch children need toys, you know, and then you believe in that story. And then you continue to do lots of research on what kind of toy the children will need. You know? So it's a completely a mind-created reality on which you are trying to engage with. This is very, very important. Please look at this. I always wait for his blessings. <laughs> so, actually this is the crux of learning. All learning is about finding similarity, finding difference. There is no other thing that you are doing. All your experiences are being, that is, I am not talking about book reading, huh? I am not talking about that nonsense at all. I am talking about how experiential learning process. You can imagine first time you ate mango. You know? Then after a few days, you get another mango. Immediately there is a recall. Huh, this mango, that mango. You know? So the, there is no language required. You can call it arm, mango, whatever you feel like. But that is no, that's not going to change your experience. Understand? So all this intake is, it's an experiential thing that is happening. So, so the body, the senses begin to organize this information. Not linguistically, but experientially. So each time this happens, then it keeps on building and then it understands, ha, huh, this mango, is this, Alfonsa, and also other thing is that the various stages of mango, from a carry to the, you know, all that. So there is a continuous process that is happening in us, which is just to do with senses. It's continuously making this information. So what I t talk about is, there is an inherent nature of the child and biological nature of learning. 
can look at me. So, so what happens is that because we are designed biologically to learn, what the world does is to awaken to that process, to that possibility. So it's, there's no addition that is required. But when you place word as the source, it begins to condition you because that is not your natural thing. Reading is not natural. Seeing is natural. Understand, man? So, awakening of senses, awakening of, uh, you know, all these possibilities which are inherent in you gets awakened if you are engaging with the real world and in the, re and the, and in the manner that is biologically correct. But what the word does is to completely condition a process. You know, it's simply like this, that, you know, I'm sure uh, you may have experienced this, that, you know, when children, uh, the normal nature of children is to be contented. They're happy. But for some reason, they get angry, they are crying. Within within few minutes, they're back to normal. Am I right? This is a normal thing, you know. So their nature is to be contented. But what is happening today is that every morning they have to fight with their parents. Where they will be sent to school. And in the classroom they are all the time tensed. So what happens is that this tension and this ang angriness that became default. Once in a while they become happy. <laughs> but you know, understand, huh? so the whole nature gets changed because you are doing something truly unnatural to the child. That is not the nature. So these things which are temporary measures, which are required only to deal with crisis, these are all crisis management things, you know, getting angry, crying, all these are crisis management. But the moment that is becoming the whole day affair, naturally, uh, you know, then that gets installed in, in the person. So this, you know, this uh, uh, timelessness, omnipresence, this is all actually a nature of a child. You can just look at a child and say that, you know. Time doesn't enter his head. He is in timelessness. He doesn't feel boredom. You know? Boredom is nothing but presence of time. I'm sure you, you, you will remember Friday evenings are very good because it, time goes fast on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday evening is, takes time. Monday takes longer time. <laughs> yeah. So the notion of time in an artificial manner, we are engaging with it because we have created a society that is that is detrimental to our, you know, timeless way of being. A child is in timelessness. Am I right? He's never in a hurry. Ah, but this is also true with rural people. This is not just I am talking about childlike thing. You, if you know any village, go and sit there and see how many hours they will wait for a bus with no boredom at all. They will sit, wait for it. Uh, and I believe it is because that there is a shift between mind and body. Learning from experience is what we say. Am I right? That's a normal usage. Na? So learning is done by somebody and experience is some, something else. And learning is something else. These are separated. So what I say is that learning the experience. There is no division. So you can also imagine that in most places they use method, you know, to teach something. There is a method. So who learns the method? Can the body learn a method? It's the mind that learns the method. Huh. Two advertisements. One, tomorrow and day after, I am doing a uh, workshop on rethinking parenting. It is not about how to, you know, it's completely about how to learn from children, how to let them be. And then we also do workshops, three day workshops to really understand what is learning. Chennai. So this is what we normally do now, you know, conduct small, small workshops here and there uh, so that people really get engaged with 
what is learning. It's, it's our slightly experiential kind of activities where we you know, begin to use our senses once again, that kind of thing. So, uh, so I actually happened to run a school for three years. This is where I really, you know, got an you know, idea about, uh, uh, I was against schools. I, 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 you know, I used to always talk about no school. I mean, even now, even now, I'm not in schools. But somehow I got a school. Somebody had taken over a school and then I had to be part of that process. So I called it reimagining schools. So there are a few issues that we need to understand that first thing I asked the teachers that they were around is that children are going to imitate you. Are you worthy of their imitation? Number one. Second question is that, do you really have anything to teach them? Actually, you ask these questions, you find that none of this actually fits. So then I told them, let's then observe them. Let's find out what they are. Let's, you know, give them opportunity to really do what they really like to do. So these three years, uh, you know, children just played. Again, what I mean by play is they just learned. They just went around doing things and we documented that. So we have almost 4,000 videos just from that experience. And every evening we will sit down and watch these videos again and again. So it's from this that, you know, one slowly, slowly got this idea that there is something that is clearly logical to everything that they do. So they are not just mindless things that they are doing, you know. So, so the basically, uh, the two paradigms that we are dealing with is one is the teaching paradigm, other one is the learning paradigm. Learning paradigm is natural. And in learning paradigm, the most important thing is that creativity comes first. Today, you know, it's an afterthought. When everything is over, we are wondering now, where did creativity go? You know, and there are creativity workshops, those, I mean, strange things, design thinking workshops, that's a new thing. Everybody has caught on now, you know. <laughs> Simply not understanding what is learning, simple. So, so as I told you earlier, it is about playfulness and not about play. So, what children learn is, they ch learn the world. And nature has given a system for creating, awakening of tools, development of uh, abilities, all that. All that is part of this whole process. One doesn't have to do any effort in that. It's already inbuilt. You know? So, let me just, you know, <clears throat> go through some of the things uh, about how the child learns the world. <clears throat> so, you have a book, can I just, for a minute? So in childhood, how many of you have, you know, you must have done like this and said something about it, what is it? House? Right. So, So I, I studied this whole process of what actually children do and I was able to understand that one, children are learning the way the world is. Simply, what is the world, that is what they are trying to understand. But uh, they are understanding in a, in a system that is connected with senses. Understand, no? So what they are learning is the form. One aspect that what they learn is the form. That is when they keep like this and say, they don't talk about it, you know. So we keep creating that. Something we saw, we create a similar thing, which looks like that. That's a form. So all this is like that, you know. The camera. But there is also another very, very interesting thing, which is, uh, this, she had never seen a binocular. That, that form made her to do that. Actually, in design, there is a term called affordances. Affordances is actually what that thing motivates you to do, what it invites you to do. So it's not that you know it already. You know? For example, when a child comes to... Uh, I'll show you that. I'll, I think I have a video of that. Huh. So immediately, they, they respond. They see something. So the formal aspect is explored in that. Ghar banaya, flats banaya, bike. So it is all form. And then they explore function.
So there's a function that they play. What is the use of house? Hmm? And then it is interesting that, uh, so how a thing happens is also being repeated. See the next one, that's very interesting. Look at the way the person will use to this one. Huh. Look at the gate man opening it. Yeah. You know, the way a gate opens is what he's doing. I'm just calling it dynamic form, meaning, you know, it's also a kind of a study of form. Bike चल <laughs> And of course, they explore the structure, the strength of materials. No, they may actually make a house. This all happened in the school. So double storied form and function. And and see, I am actually for the convenience making this kind of divisions. No. You don't have to do that. I, I just want to, for, for exploration, I mean, explanation sake, I'm just, you know, doing that. So, here they are more interested in the whole process of making. This is very interesting, this whole idea of quality, that when children sit on a sofa, they bounce. Well, that, I'm sure you must have seen that. Uh, so, one day I saw in the, uh, what do you call that, in the railway stations, now they have this kind of uh, chairs. We find it difficult to sit on that. You can keep sliding. But see what she is doing. another very very interesting area of exploration because uh, as I told you that most things that modernity understands have been reconstructed these are all mental ideas this is not nothing to do with the biology of things you know? so uh, again what I'm talking about is that like knowledge or knowing aesthetics or beauty is part of your biology it's not an afterthought it's a cognitive need to organize things in a certain manner. It's not that only few artists can do it. No. See, the very notion of art is a modern construct. You go to any village, you'll find that things are organized well. You know? So there is an innate need for organizing space. So I found two, three very interesting. I have more documentation, but I'm just showing you two interesting uh, things that I came across.
after seeing this, I've realized that architecture should be should begin right in the first standard, not after 12th. <laughs> Absolutely. See, because these are all biological needs. Shelter is a biological need. Isn't it? Actually, the whole knowledge system is connected with our biology. What we want to understand. And I feel that the first thing a child learns is to be a mother. To take care. You know? So, this is all understanding how does a biological being respond to the world. What is the requirement of it? So, what is, what is required to learn? So, see that uh, girl. Look at her. No? Just look at her response. So, what I'm trying, telling is that these are very natural responses of people. So, this is another very, very interesting thing that I have studied uh, on drawing. <coughs> Again, drawing has nothing to do with art. What children draw is not self-expression. What children draw is actually an act. <coughs> what I say is that <coughs> drawing is the playing that children do on two dimensional surface you will find exactly the same kind of logic that they are exploring the form, they are exploring all that that they could have done in three-dimensional space which gets translated into two-dimensional space. That's all. So, I have several, uh, you know, uh, I mean, huge collection of this from which we have uh, been able to understand this, you know. So, one, number one proof is that children draw what they see. So, human beings, it is a head that comes first. And slowly, slowly the other parts come up, you know. And uh, animals side, house friend. So this is interesting that this girl, this buffalo, uh, is done by a girl who, who every day feeds the buffalo. So naturally she sees it every day, morning, you know. Do you know what this is? Hmm? Windshield, windshield. Look, this is the, the two mirrors, two wipers. <laughs> so this is done by a child who is so much interested in watching the this thing. So he, every day his job is to keep drawing just the wiper. I have a huge collection which I know another time if there is interest then I can show this. Then another very important thing that I found is this. How do they move from two dimension into three dimension? How that process happens, you know. So from a simple line drawing of a vehicle, how does it then, you know, from the side. So you keep, uh, you know, uh, working on the side first. Then slowly, see in this case, in this case, you know, the three-dimensional quality is yet to come fully. In this, clearly it has come. So, so this is a, you know, interesting Look at this, this is a top view. I also find this idea that, you know, uh, that a finished product is seldom seen in a child's life. It's always a process. Constantly trying, 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 bettering, you know. So, So I believe that since, you know, after spending time in, uh, you know, again spending time with foundation courses, I feel that the foundation has a possibility of bringing the child back, you know. But of course foundation has to be reimagined. We must understand what really it offers. How can the mind and body come back together? How can our senses begin to function? How can that, you know, that whole thing has to be reimagined. So it's not just teaching of aesthetics, but how do we look at awakening of aesthetics? So, you know, there is a possibility of, uh, you know, reimagination that, you know, that, uh, and uh, not only that, uh, I think uh, design also gives you a kind of a blueprint for any kind of higher education, you know, whichever that is. Uh, so, 
so summing up i feel that you know there is a new possibility of setting up a very very fresh research because i'm sure not not many people are happy with what is happening you know, the whole schooling business college you know so how do we really reimagine where people are truly interested in learning this is one of the you know places where you find at least some people interested in learning you just go out into the regular towns in these places you know it's just a waste of life colleges and schools just wasting life so i am also actually looking at beauty as natural ergonomics not ergonomics as is understood today but as natural ergonomics how would the body respond to things now we are trying to make the person fit into the product you know <laughs> no how does the body respond to things and i find a very clear correlation of beauty in this kind of need of the body to be in comfort you know this i i saw one day that two people were sitting and talking in a in a village i found two people sitting and talking on the ground and after some time a third person came in and i found this beautiful thing that was happening you know these two reorganized recomposed and accommodated the third person i wondered where what is that thing that is you know uh, you know making us do that was naturally it is about my comfort and the comfort of the situation you know and this is not a planned activity you know why is the body wanting a a, a, a situation like that you know so this is completely a new possibility that uh, that i feel exists to explore beauty in a very new way you see what is happening there is also cognitive science scientists looking at beauty in the western world uh, called neuro aesthetics or something like that so what they are doing is that they are you know making the artist do some painting and ask you know asking what is happening here you know and another thing that is happening is that they are uh, you know looking at when people come to an art gallery what happens to their brain you know what something like that i find it very strange to look at beauty biology from these kind of activities it's like you know you you show bread so you feel hungry or you may not feel because if your stomach is full and then telling that this is the biology right actually we have to look at hunger isn't it not the product not the food that's not what we should be looking at it biology is the hunger similarly similarly like hunger there is something in us that is wanting a certain kind of an organization of things so uh just getting back to the you know i'm just wanting to say that there are uh things that are possible which is to uh, you know look at uh, how do we look at a school again as a uh, space for creation of knowledge how do we create that space how do we get teachers to move out of their uh, you know teaching mind into a learning mind you know uh, so there are several possibilities so i'll stop now and if you have any I want to remind you one thing that in this country you hardly you won't even find one place where knowledge is created not one university create knowledge it is all borrowed from the west are you happy about it and of course we say we are great country i mean i don't understand this <laughs> great country but not one university that creates knowledge hmm? i think we should be ashamed no okay sorry chalo <laughs> let the business go on as usual modernity meaning mediated knowing from direct knowing to mediated knowing understood
clear definition. Now, I don't use your strange, whatever West has created this. No. Fresh meanings I will give you. I don't know what is, what is their definition, I don't know. My meaning is, mediated knowing is what created modernity. So I call that modernity. So postmodernity, modernity, all that is same game. There's no difference. It's all mental creations. Direct knowing, so I differentiate between these two kinds of knowing and being. So modernity is a way of being that got, you know, that got formed because we got into mediated knowing from direct knowing. So you can find all the characteristics in that. Senses are not used, you're absent, you know, all that kind of thing you can see in that. Coach. No, <laughs> you see, I, my interest is basically how does the brain form? And my interest is from zero, from the time the child comes out, what do we do to the child? Are we interested in create, you know, formation of a mind which is capable of creating knowledge or just to analyze somebody's information? This is my, you know, so I don't know about, you know, other kind of things. So my question is very clear. My engagement is very clear, you know, and uh, yeah. So that 